Imagine this, you decided to spend your summer vacation in Japan. You contemplated kickstarting the adventure in Tokyo, but decided that Osaka is perhaps the better option since the plane would land at one of the world's most amazing airports, the Kansai Airport, because it is built on two infamous sinking artificial islands. You are now on the plane heading to the land of the rising sun. Turbulence is high because a major storm is smashing Osaka Bay, but the plane lands just fine. However, the doors remain closed as a voice on the intercom makes your bones chill. We are experiencing a minor delay because some of the ocean waves made it to the plane and it is not safe to exit the plane at the moment. Free refreshments will be distributed as the authorities solve the problem. Now, this might sound crazy and far-fetched for most of you, but it is sort of exactly what happened on September 4th, 2018, when Typhoon Jebi hit Kansai Airport. Kansai Airport is simply sinking, along with the whole two artificial islands it is built on, and no one knows how to save it, which begs the question, why nobody can fix this $21 billion floating airport? The city of Osaka is second only to Tokyo in terms of everything. However, it is quite distinguishable from Tokyo in so many ways because it is calm and relaxed, features more heritage sites and insane nightlife. Another unique feature of this city is its international airport, Kansai, which for rather peculiar reasons was built on an artificial island that is sinking into the ocean. It is sort of crazy because the engineers and designers knew this was likely to happen as they built it 35 years ago. Kansai Airport was launched in 1994 and it was and still is an engineering marvel and a very effective busy airport. To be honest, it is also a tourist destination since it is sinking at a rather alarming pace. It initially cost about $15 billion to build, but another $6 billion were spent mostly on unique measures designed to keep the ocean waves at bay and the sinking rate as low as possible. I will talk about how they built it in a bit, because right now, I am just as curious as you as to why they built this floating airport, even though they knew that the ocean would reclaim it. The obvious first reason was to complete the Giga City of Tokyo, which needless to say is the master samurai of all Japanese cities. The project was first floated in the 1960s as the Osaka region was rapidly expanding but also losing trade to Tokyo. At first, the planners proposed a new airport near Kobe. However, these plans were simply not compatible with the city's horizontal expansion and projected land shortage. Yes, I said land shortage because even though Japan is a relatively large country, merely 33% is habitable while the rest is mountainous and covered with mostly forests, thus unsuitable for major international airports. The city's old airport was also a nuisance since it is located in a densely populated area and also unexpandable because it is surrounded by buildings. It was also a major source of noise and widely hated by most of the city's residents. So, the planners decided to build a floating airport. Needless to say, they succeeded because Kansai Airport did not just solve the fundamental transportation, noise pollution, and economic issues, but also added to the fame of the region. Let's now take a brief, close look at what this airport is and how it was built before the dive deep into the whole help, it is sinking and there is nothing we can do about it part. Kansai International Airport has one thing in common with most airports out there, many names and even nicknames. Other than that, it is a truly unique, one-of-a-kind masterpiece and has won multiple prestigious awards even though it is sinking into the ocean. It is strategically located in the middle of the picturesque Osaka Bay within three municipalities, including Izumasano, Sanan, and Tajiri in Osaka Prefecture. The airport covers the area of two main artificial islands. The first is 510 hectares, and the second is approximately 545 hectares, for a total of 1,055 hectares, or a little more than 10.5 square kilometers. This leads us to wonder, how did they build it? 
To build this masterpiece, engineers had to overcome some very serious, dangerous issues, such as the risks of earthquakes and typhoons, which are common in Japan. Mind you, storm surges in Osaka Bay can be up to 3 meters. The water depth was not an issue, since it is only around 18 meters. However, the seabed was a huge headache because it sits on top of 20 meters of soft Holocene clay, which holds 70% water, which means everything heavy on it will just keep sinking. To solve this issue, much of the clay had to be dried first to create a solid foundation that could withstand the immense, nearly incalculable weight of the two massive artificial islands. To do this, construction crews laid sand 5 feet deep atop the clay seabed and installed 2.2 million vertical pipes, each nearly 16 inches in diameter. Afterward, these pipes were hammered into the clay and filled with sand. They also built a colossal seawall made of rock and 48,000 tetrapods. Interestingly, three mountains were excavated to produce a total of 207 million cubic meters of rubble to construct the islands over three years from 1987 to 1990. By the end of 1990, a three-kilometer bridge was also completed to connect the island to the mainland at Rinku Town. As soon as this airport was complete, it began to sink faster than predicted. Initially, engineers and designers predicted that it would sink no more than 5.7 meters before eventually settling at a safe level of about 4 meters above sea level. However, what followed was a nightmare because the immense weight of the two islands and airport buildings compressed the seabed site. By 1999, the island sank as much as 8.2 meters and continued to sink at a rather fast, scary pace. The issues persisted even more as some parts of the airport sank faster than others, creating an uneven surface and threatening the structural integrity of the buildings. Luckily, the terminal's columns were designed to be adjustable, and even hydraulics were used to make the necessary adjustments as the island sank. These columns are extended by inserting thick metal plates at their bases. Despite the sinkage problem, the airport proved to be quite resilient. In January 1995, Japan was struck by the great Hanshin earthquake. The epicenter was far too close to the airport, but luckily it was not affected because engineers used sliding joints in the structures. Even the glass in the windows remained intact. Then, in September 1998, the airport survived a typhoon with wind speeds over 60 meters per second. But in September 2018, the airport was hit by Typhoon Jebi. The airport had to pause operations after seawater surges inundated the island. Runways were hit, and the water reached up to the engines of some aircraft. Needless to say, the results were catastrophic, but within days, the airport resumed partial operations. Now you must be wondering, how will this airport survive since the expected sinkage rate will make the surface even with the ocean level by as early as 2056? Unfortunately, to the date of the making of this video, the best engineers in the world have been unable to come up with something feasible and effective to solve this extreme issue. Thus, we can only assume that the airport will continue to sink while thick reinforced seawalls are installed and increased in height every few years as the situation dictates. The good news here is that eventually, the seabed below the airport will become fully compressed and the airport will stop sinking, and by then, it will be time for major improvements and renovations that will produce an even more amazing world-class airport. We love hearing from you, so please let us know what you think in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon.